welcome to our Facebook Live event. Um, as many of you know, May is Mental Health Awareness Month and we are kicking off early with a panel discussion today. Um, so we have here a group of caregivers We'll be talking about emotional wellness and caregiving and different coping strategies for caregivers. Um, and at the end, we'll also be talking about some of the great benefits available to caregivers um, through SEIU 775 Benefits Group. My name is Becky Fryant. I am the manager for health improvement programs at Benefits Group. And a lot of my job is making sure that we have really high quality emotional wellness benefits available to caregivers. And I'm gonna take a second to let the rest of our panel introduce themselves, um, where they're from and their background in caregiving. I'm Heidi, I'm from Linwood, Washington, and I spent 15 years as a caregiver, home care aide, and just recently transitioned to peer mentorship, so I provide support for other home care aides. My name is Shay, I work for the Benefits Group as an instructor. Uh, I've been in HCA since 2015, living in Vancouver, Washington, um, but was a caregiver much longer than that. I'm a third generation caregiver, so it was just sort of a part of our family upbringing. And I'm Melissa Berry, and I'm from Vancouver, Washington, that I have been caregiving for the last 14 years, and yeah. So we have a very experienced panel today um, who know a lot about caregiving and know a lot about the stressors associated with caregiving. Um, and so why are we talking about mental health and caregiving? We know that caregiving is a very, very stressful profession. We know from research that caregivers actually have higher rates of anxiety and depression than the general population, but there can be a lot of barriers to um, getting help and being able to cope. And so we wanted to have a safe place um, to talk about these issues, um, decrease stigma, um, and raise awareness about all of the different resources that are available to caregivers. Um, so thank you so much for tuning in today. Um, having a live audience really makes this a fun event and we really encourage you to comment, ask questions of our panel. Um, we are excited to sort of engage with our audience. Um, as a quick disclaimer, we do just want to remind everyone Facebook is not a confidential platform. So if you um, do have questions that sort of are thinking about your clients, please make sure not to put any identifying information about your clients in your comments and also make sure that anything in your comments is something that you are comfortable sharing with the public. Um, and with that I'm going to go ahead and get started um, talking about our discussion. So as we just talked about caregiving is stressful and we know that there's a lot of stigma in terms of accessing resources. And so one of the things that I wanted to sort of bring up with our panel is if you could sort of talk about some recommendations that you think would decrease um, getting emotional wellness or mental health resources for caregivers. Um, decreasing it is something that's hard because we're an isolated group and so we can't go like to an office and talk about it but to be aware of what we have um, and just make sure that you reach out when you can mm -hmm. to know that you have those mm -hmm. is um, it can help decrease a lot because I use them and it helps me that's great yeah. so just knowing what resources are available, available ask for help yeah great I think talking about it openly, whether it's with your own personal support network like friends or um, a lot of people don't realize that they should be talking to their health care provider about mental health um, and checking in with, you know, your care, your own care team, not just, you know, we always talk about our clients care team, but we don't necessarily think of our own. And it's, I think decreasing stigma is also taking care of yourself and that outreach for you as well. That's great. That's something that I hear a lot when talking to caregivers is that caregivers are often so focused on caring for other people, they forget to care about themselves. And just going to your primary care doctor is super important. And um, primary care is a great place to go and access mental health or have like that initial doorway. Yeah. And to expand on that, you know, whenever somebody goes to the doctor for their annual checkup, people around them don't say, oh, what's wrong with you? You know, no, I'm just going for my checkup, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that a mental health checkup should be a normal thing. You know, it is right. mental health. It is, you know, something that is ongoing. Doesn't mean there's something wrong with us, but uh, checking up. Yeah, because yeah, that's kind of funny because when you said that, like everybody views, uh, diff our views are different. So like you say, like somebody has to view you like when you want to get in self-care. And that shouldn't be a stigma. That should be something beneficial. Mm -hmm. 
Absolutely. Those are all great tips. Thank you so much for those wonderful responses. Um, the next thing that um, I was going to talk about were some really important statistics around mental health. So one of the reasons why um, stigma is so harmful is because people who are struggling um, often feel like they are really alone. Um, and actually, if you look at the graphic that we're just about to post, um, what you'll see is in any year, one out of five adults in the United States is going to have a diagnosable mental health condition. If we look over people's lifetimes, it's actually 50% of the population. So that means that actually if you're struggling, you are like the furthest thing from alone. Literally all of us either have struggled with something um, having to do with mental health or love somebody who is struggling with um, something to, that has to do with mental health. So um, that's, I think, a really important thing to keep in mind. I guess for the panel, if you were going to tell one, one or two things to caregivers that you felt was really important for them to know about their mental health or their emotional wellness, what would it be? Okay, go ahead. Okay, I, I, I'll start again. Um, sure. Self-care is something that mm -hmm. I never thought of, which is actually, I have a little funny thing, because I always thought care was like cleaning yourself and taking care of yourself mm -hmm. in a bath, as, you know, not self-care like something that, when I looked it up, is that you can go out to dinner with a friend, mm -hmm. you can do all these things or tips that are helpful that I didn't think of self-care like that. Mm -hmm. like, I even thought self-care is like take a nice shower or a hot bath. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize there's more than just that resource. So self-care is self-care really is a big tip for me. And just um, for the panel, what are some of your favorite self-care activities that mm -hmm. you like to do to relax and sort of decompress from? I'd work? like to hear from them guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for me, immersion in water seems to be really, yeah, if I can take some time to actually take a bath instead of a shower. Um, if I'm lucky enough to have some time to, to sit in the pool or whatever, um, just some time in the water is a really good distressor for me personally. It's great. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, time on the couch with my cat or <laughs> my dog. Um, huge de-stressor just watching Netflix with my dog here and my cat here. So. <laughs> Um, yeah, or hanging out with friends. Um, I think self-care is so important because we are used to caring for others that our own needs tend to slip through the cracks. Mm -hmm. And we can't really be expected to care fully for somebody else if we're not caring for ourselves or taking care of our own needs. That's really important to know self-care. To, right. I mean, to realize it, that you need it, like you're saying, because you're so consumed with caring for somebody. Right. That self-care does not come to you like in your thoughts. Mm -hmm. The other thing that I really like about all those examples is they are super inexpensive, <laughs> and they're, you, you don't have to travel far to do those things. It's sort of a simple thing that is helpful to de-stress. Mine is going up to my lake. I have a property up at the lake, it's and great. sitting by a fire oh, is just lovely. my heaven above heaven. That's my de-stressor. That sounds great. And, and Washington is a great place because there's so <laughs> yes. much nature and oh, yeah. being able to be outdoors. The nature. I love to walk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. What are other things that um, you all feel are important for caregivers to know about mental health and emotional wellness? I think it's really important for caregivers to know that um, emotional and mental health is um, it's work, it's practice. Mm -hmm. um, it's not a, a state. You know, you're not there and you're good. It's something that you have to continually practice, the self-care and the checkups and things like that. And it's a, it's a journey, a constant. Mm -hmm. That's a great one. Um, I, that actually, I think, ties really well into um, some of our mindfulness class that we'll mm -hmm. be discussing at the end of the event. Mm -hmm. um, so one thing about mindfulness is that as a practice and even practicing two minutes a day mm -hmm. um, can really build up kind of that muscle of being able to decompress, be present. Yeah, and I, I did the mindfulness class and then now I use it at night. I, I can't use it in the morning. Mm -hmm. My mind's just going too much. So mm -hmm. mine is at night, put music on, and I do my mindfulness then. So, and it helps, I sleep better. That's awesome. Yeah. So it, so it sounds like it even helps with kind of physical. Yeah, and even though I've taken it a year ago, I still use it. That's really good. To cool. now, yeah. So those are skills that really. Oh yeah, are. and like you said, it wasn't, I was not easy for me at first. <laughs> mm -hmm. I wanted to get up off the chair and run because I couldn't be sitting there long enough for her to help me relax. So mm -hmm. it, it does take practice to be able to 
to even understand that you need that kind of stuff to slow you down. That's great. Anything you want to add, Heidi, in terms um, of just in the moment, especially if you can't take time away, if you are with a client or consumer, um, just reminding yourself in the moment, if it's specifically a stressful time, that it's not personal, mm -hmm. it's not about you. Mm -hmm. um, this person is also going through numerous things, mm -hmm. so they're taking their stress out the only way they know how, which is often you, mm -hmm. um, but it's not personal. Mm -hmm. And just reminding yourself and taking yourself out of the equation, I think is so important because we tend to get so wrapped up in that moment sometimes, if it's tense and just mm -hmm. feeling like, oh, this is, I'm, I'm doing a horrible job, but really it's, no, this person is just going through something and we're it for them. So mm -hmm. just reminding ourselves that it's not about us. Mm -hmm in that moment is so important and it's really hard to do sometimes. Because you might have already so much going before you even get to the door that you need right. to let it go before you walk in that door. Exactly. Because mm -hmm. you've just gone from one very stressful person and now you're going to another. Mm -hmm. So right before I do that I walk and do my talk, mm -hmm. talk self. Shake it off. Mm -hmm. Shake it off. <laughs> Shake it off is a good one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To move on. So the self talk it sounds like. Oh really yeah. Important. Yes. Yeah. And then, um, and it sounds like thinking about if you have multiple clients, being able to sort of leave one client and mentally leave that client before going to the next one. Yes, yes. I imagine it's the same thing with anything going on in, in your personal life, that mm, it's important oh yeah. to sort of leave that. Right. Let go Gotta of leave it. it out the door. And that's a hard practice because you're already so emotional. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So definitely practice. I'm hearing the theme of practice. all of this is, it's, it's really about practice. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Um, so I'm gonna pull up some more questions here. Um, and I, for those of you who are just joining us now, um, we're having a panel discussion on mental health and challenges for caregivers. Um, and our panel, Melissa, Heidi, and Shay are sharing their various experiences around how they maintain their emotional wellness and how we can all decrease stigma around getting resources for caregivers. Um, so one of the things I want to talk about when we've really started to talk about this is, is coping strategies, which I think is so important. Um, the benefits group definitely is really concerned about this for caregivers and we want to provide good support for caregivers because we know how stressful this job is. And so we have a whole variety of resources that we offer. We have kind of our menu of mindfulness classes, which have sort of been mentioned already, um, the Ginger app and an employee assistance program as well, which um, if you're interested in learning more, please stay through the end of the event and and we will show you resources on that. Um, but at this point, I want to turn it over to the panel and just talk about um, what kinds of coping strategies you recommend for caregivers if there's other things that we haven't talked about yet that are worth sort of thinking about. Coping skills is to reach out to other people for me mm -hmm. um, because I can't, I, sometimes I need the other sound person to say, oh, I'm sorry that you're going through that, just to hear me say <laughs> something. Um, to me, having uh, a board to bounce off of has always been a good coping skill with me because um, um, I work for an agency and I don't, I only know like two people like, you know, like that work at there. So basically I can't reach out to any of my coworkers at my agency. Mm -hmm. um, so um, I, my coping skills have been that to reaching out to others and not be ashamed to say mm -hmm. what's going on mm -hmm. because um, emotion is a big thing for me. Mm -hmm. and, um, I have I'm, I, I don't know why. I wish I could get rid of it, but my I I, I have a knee jerk thing where somebody will say something to me and I'll get emotional. Mm -hmm. um, I'm I've worked hard on that. Mm -hmm. I mean, because that's not something easy that comes to somebody. To even have somebody say, you know, you're very emotional. It hurts. So I have to walk away and not take it personal and show them I'm not. Mm -hmm. When you're already so hurt, you know, because you didn't think they would say something like that to you. Um, I can't call somebody. You know, that, that's what I need. And I need to call somebody and say, am I emotional? You know, be honest with me, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so I always reach out to people. Mm -hmm. That I, I and it's good to have somebody. Re Lately, I've been reaching out to Ginger Io. Oh, that's awesome! So, and can can you um, 
say a little bit more about what Ginger is? Ginger I.O. has been where I am talking to somebody, uh, texting, and they're giving me tips about how I can handle the things that I'm dealing with. Mm -hmm. And one was emotions. Um, that's when I found out about self-care. That's and, awesome. And I went and looked it up real quick um, because here, here I was thinking it's hygiene. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> I seriously did. Um, anyway, um, I looked it up and they got so many tips on that self-care mm -hmm. that was beneficial to me mm -hmm. because it wasn't just like me thinking of all the things I take care of myself. It's to take the time to go and do the things that you enjoy. Mm -hmm. Take the time to find a friend, mm -hmm. go out to dinner, go bowling, do something mm -hmm. that is something you enjoy. Or even it could be food. You mm -hmm. know, I'm going, I'm watching what I'm eating, so I got a little special treat for me when I feel I need it, you know, mm -hmm. and I'm not knock myself for doing it. Mm -hmm. So these are all tips I got from self-care. That's fantastic. Um, and in terms of, so I, I love the idea of talking to people. Mm -hmm. um, so it sounds like your coach from Ginger um, is mm -hmm. one person that you right. talk to. And Ginger is a free benefit that is available for caregivers who have worked an hour for an employer who pays into the Health Benefits Trust. We'll be talking about it later today. Awesome. Um, but I also am um, wondering who uh, your kind of go-to people are that you like to talk to if you're needing support. I have a coworker. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it might not be anybody. That's okay. I think she talks to her client, all of her people that she trains. That's who she talks to. Oh, sure. Yeah. Um, but I'm married to a wonderful man too, and who so, is kind of a, yeah my my coach in mindfulness actually and. Uh, He's, he's, he's a good confidant, a good shoulder. I'm very lucky to have him. Yeah. He's great to partners. Yeah. Good. I was going to see my partner as well. Um, and close friends. Uh, sometimes just sending a quick text to someone, hey, I'm going through a rough time or feeling especially emotional today is That's helpful. hard for me because my spouse doesn't understand what I do. So it's hard for me to talk to him. So I have to reach out to friends that understand. But that's good to be aware of. Yeah. Yeah. Because if you talk to somebody else that's not a caregiver, they're not going to understand your situation, not like you're talking to somebody else. Right. That's great. And we are actually getting lots of comments from the audience on their favorite coping strategies. Um, so some of the things that we are hearing are um, gardening, hanging out with friends, playing oh. with um, grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Oh, yeah. Other favorite coping strategies from all of you. And please keep the coping strategies coming, audience, oh, as well. Awesome. Going for walks, just being out and have your own thoughts to yourself and not have all the stressful things from work on your mind just to get out and Breathe. be in the present <laughs> mm -hmm. in a way. Um, walking my dog is always fun. It's great. In our basic training course, there's a module on self-care and managing stress, and uh, there's an opportunity for me to ask the students, what do you guys do You know, for managing stress? And music is a big thing for a lot of our students, um, and it is for me too. Uh, feeling really stressed, go dance it out. Um, or, or something with lyrics that have a very positive message. That's great. And I love um, people bringing up exercise as a coping strategy because there mm -hmm. is actually either walking or dancing or sort of yeah. body movement. Um, there is a lot of research evidence that even a small amount of exercise daily can decrease depression. Mm -hmm. um, so that's just a really great um, coping skill. Other, um, other things that um, you as a panel would recommend to caregivers in terms of managing stress, um, either related to the job or related to personal life so that it doesn't sort of interfere with working as a caregiver? Learn to say no. Learn to say no and set limits. I think it's really hard for caregivers especially. We want, we're helpers, so we want to do, do all, all the things. things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, and six fix her uppers, right? Yeah, we are. And, and setting limits is, is really important and I think it's really hard for caregivers. So learning to set limits is, I don't, know that word. I don't know that <laughs> word. I gotta learn it. Mm -hmm. And that's true, honestly. The thing, isn't that, are you yeah. kind of like that? It's hard to say no. Um, I was gonna expand like being boundaried. Like, oh, there you go. Knowing that's your own one. rights. Yeah. When working with a consumer, yes, we are well versed in their rights, but remembering that you also have rights mm -hmm. and allowing yourself to give boundaries to a consumer. It took me so long. I mean, I started caregiving when I was 18 and you just don't know how to boundary yourself at no, 18 like sure. for years. And I was, I started as a live-in caregiver and talk about blurred lines. Like it's really hard to create boundaries, especially
especially when you're living with your consumer. Because right. it's like, oh, I can wake you up in the middle of the night, you know? <laughs> so yeah. just learning how to set your own boundaries and realize that you have rights as a caregiver as well. And yeah. And I always recommend resources to always look into anything that is, is like a problem in your life, to look it up. Um, like even if you're like have a client that has issues and you're trying to understand it if you don't understand it you know to 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 read about it to learn about it so that you have more coping skills with them right and more empathy empathy and understanding yeah Mm -hmm. that's a good one boundaries I like that it's big it's a big one (laughs) it was a big one for me I didn't know see and I've got both of them I need to work on seeing some more so this is awesome we are getting lots of audience participation um, and I'm seeing some more questions around um, where can I find this information um, in terms of information about the resources and the benefits that are available to caregivers um, just stay tuned a couple more minutes and we are actually going to have a video that talks about our full menu of options um, one correction that I do want to make I have been referring to our tools for calm program as our mindfulness courses um, but we call it tools for calm um, because um, really mindfulness is a tool for staying calm and in the moment with your clients. Um, so, um, and a couple of other favorite um, coping strategies that have come in. So, relaxing in the sun um, from Brenda D. Sharon K. says working with beads and leather work, and Natalie B. says alone time, um, which that it, it is great to be able to carve out alone time. I oh, am, yeah. I am big agreeer of that as I'm the mom of a small person. Um, <laughs> so, um, yeah. Um, so let's see here. So I want to see if we have other, are there any other audience? I want to call the audience out for any, um, audience questions. Um, if there are any more, um, and then I'm going to look and see, um, we've kind of talked about top three coping strategies for stress. Um, are there other things kind of, as we're talking that have come up for the three of you that feel like they'd be important to share with caregivers around emotional wellness? or sort of thoughts that have gotten spurred from this conversation? I can say something about it because what it is for me is when you have your own issues to realize that um, it's okay to have them mm-hmm. and, and I don't want to be judged on them and it, that's a big thing in our stigma mm-hmm. is we get judged on what we have. Like you're saying, if you go to a med- mental person, people thinking you got a problem. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it was way back when my mom was considered unfit to take care of me because she was seeing a psychiatrist. Mm-hmm. So I'm glad to see that now, in our days, that we accept things like that, um, that it's okay to have a problem. It's okay. Like you said, we're not alone. Mm-hmm. Um, issues are, are um, in everybody's life. Um, and to, uh, like we were talking about, understand them. Mm-hmm. You know, that like they're not taking it out on you. Mm-hmm. Um, it might be their situation. Um, I, I think I've learned a lot from all the classes that I've taken to mm-hmm. get me to this point. Mm-hmm. And I still think I'm growing. You know, I mean, every day I got to learn something new. Mm-hmm. Um, so, like, um, just to know that we all, we all have these things where we're so intact on what we do about the person that we're like on the back burner and we're not getting... And we don't see it because nobody's given us the uh, tools mm-hmm. to make a difference in our life. So when I've now done Ginger I.O., I've even changed. Mm-hmm. I don't think I'm, 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 emotions still need to get worked on, but still I'm changing to a person that can handle going from two people, mm-hmm. knowing that I need to take that break. Mm-hmm. I don't think that's, I think that knowledge of knowing that you see it in yourself, that you need to say, hey, wait a minute, I need to reach out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of things that you said are really important, Melissa. So t- being able to take a break, I mm-hmm. think, is really important. Um, and then also being sort of, because caregiving is so hard, having the training and the preparation mm-hmm. is really important to sort of have that confidence and be able to anticipate problems so you can sort of solve some in advance. Yeah. And then I've heard a couple of you talking about that being able to sort of have that distance, right, and know that um, clients are sort of going through their own struggles and that they're not really a personal thing against you if you're in the work environment with Mm -hmm. them, even though you're sort of an important person in their life. Um, Mm -hmm. So that, that all makes sense. And I think the other piece that you said, Melissa, that's so important is 
we are all experiencing various issues and stressors in our life and so that doesn't make us weak or bad people if we you know if we are experiencing issues yeah. it's interesting we're on facebook where i know people often present a very positive image of their <laughs> um life and the reality is behind that often people are experiencing stress and things that are hard that they're trying to cope with so I just want to thank all of you so much for your wonderful contributions and participation today in this event. I hope for the audience that it's um, been informative and that you um, have learned a little bit about some of the things that are available, some different coping strategies. Um, if you are just tuning in, we've just finished up a really great conversation um, with Heidi, Shay, and Melissa about their personal experiences. And if you are interested in some of the resources available to caregivers around emotional wellness, um, which I know a couple of people have been asking questions about, please stay tuned. We're going to be showing you a video that actually shows you your full menu of options, including Ginger IO, Tools for Calm, and our Employee Assistance Program. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's important to care for your emotional health, but people have different needs. So, the SEIU 775 Benefits Group offers three different and easy-to-use benefits designed to reduce feelings of stress, depression, and anxiety. Ginger, Tools for Calm, and EAP. Ginger is a touchscreen phone application that connects you with a certified emotional health coach who can help with stress reduction, finding a work-life balance, handling difficult situations, and more. Tools for Calm is a mindfulness course that offers practical guidance for relieving stress and finding more calm in your work and life. The Employee Assistance Program, EAP, gives you and your family members access to licensed professional counseling on personal, professional, financial, and legal challenges. No matter your needs or preferences, there's a self-care program that's great for you. Learn more at myseiubenefits.org slash self-care.